In this video, I'm going to walk you through the process of me recreating a digital version of my keyboard Amaya Pro 65%. You're going to notice that I'm doing some very specific measurements at times, but just know I didn't scale my keyboard and its dimensions. The last time I did that, it was very time consuming and almost frustrating due to the amount of precision it required. By eyeballing and doing rough estimates, you will get almost the exact same result as you will see me do here. Firstly, I'm going to start by making the keycaps. As you can see here, I'm simply just going to make one 5x5 standard keycap and duplicate it. Not only will duplicating them make the process a lot faster, but also allows me to give them in straight rows with the same amount of distance between each keycap. One thing you probably noticed me do here while I was creating the modifiers, I mean the shifts, backspace, enter, and any larger keycap is I'm simply adjusting them to fit the overall size of the keyboard. I've already put down the correct number of normal keycaps for the duplication feature, meaning this is the only real work that I had to do at this point in time. Here you can see I'm just giving general sizes to the keycaps in the bottom row. To put simply, I'm not too worried about giving the keycaps their exact scaled sizes. At the end of the day, I'm just trying to put ideas and inspiration into a program. Once again, all the sizing and distances where the keycaps are in different parts of the case are all eyeballed. There's no need for you to go out of your way and round to decimal points unless you want objects to be the same all around dimension wise, which you're going to see me do later on with the case. Since I'm finished making the keycaps, I'm just going to go ahead and change the cluttering of them. I want the modifiers and arrow keys to be red, while the escape key and spacebar are left a contrasting beige color. That's going to leave all the remaining standard keycaps white, which will replicate the aesthetics of the keyboard. As you can see, by selecting all of the keycaps and making them white to begin with, I only have to edit a few of them rather than all of them. Imagine this process as editing a Google Doc. Some sentences you want italicized, while others you want highlighted or bolded. Now I'm going to be starting the second half of the process. Here I am setting the dimensions for the case for the keycaps to sit in. This part is rather simple. Just make sure that all the sides have the same distance between themselves and the keycaps. Later on you will see me making the case have a hollow shape. To achieve a hollow shape, you want to grab a block that is a hole rather than a box. This way, when you combine the two objects, the block classified as a hole will make the box have a hollow interior and change the shape. Here I just duplicated my case and I've now started using decimals in my measurements. With the whole block, I am able to get the appropriate sizing in for area where my keycaps will sit, and the more precise dimensions help me reduce the amount of interior case that is exposed while having the keycaps sit in the same way they would in a real keyboard. Now that my case is hollow, all I have to do is just put it under the keycaps to make it appear as though they are connected. Of course, I can't just leave my case with a completely hollow center with the keycaps exposed. I'm now just going to fill in the empty spaces between the keycaps by creating more blocks, making them have the same height as the case, sizing them accordingly, and lastly, combining them with the case to make them part of the same object.
And that about does it. I hope you guys were able to learn something and hopefully you can make it more